NBC News foreign correspondent Kelly Kobiea, who joins us from Jerusalem as part of our team coverage this morning. So, Kelly, the Israeli military has warned more than one million people in the northern part of Gaza to move south within 24 hours. What more are they saying about this order? Is this part of the preparation for this expected ground offensive? Well, it very well could be, but they're not saying much. They're definitely not backing off of this order, though, uh, Joe and Savannah, that they are um, sticking by it, even as the U.N. says that it could come with devastating humanitarian consequences. Uh, there are people who are packing up in Gaza. They're trying to get out. They're trying to move south. Uh, the problem, well, there are many of them. There aren't enough cars, first of all, to get people to the south. There isn't enough fuel. Uh, for people to fill their tanks and get south. And once they get there, there's nowhere for them to stay. Compounding that problem, Gaza City in the north is where the Strip's largest hospital is located, Shifa Hospital. People have been taking shelter there. There are scores, hundreds of people being treated there. Uh, evacuating a hospital in less than 24 hours is just not even conceivable, and that is why you're hearing the United Nations saying, look, this is going to end in tragedy for lots of people. Compounding the problem, you have infrastructure issues. There is a way to get south, but there are also roads that are blocked for some families uh, after just days, six days of intensive bombing. 750 more targets hit by the IDF overnight, according to defense forces. Guys. Kelly, what's the reaction been like? to this order from inside Gaza, people who live there who don't know where to go. You mentioned also how the UN has reacted, but expand on that. Tell us what human rights groups are saying. Yeah, I mean, it's it's virtually impossible for a lot of these people to leave. They, you know, don't have, there's been a blockade on the Gaza Strip for the past six days. That means no water, no food, no fuel for generators, no medicine, nothing is getting in. The Gaza Strip is 25 miles long and a couple miles across. So the distances between the north and south are not massive, but the problem is just simply getting there. People are afraid. Uh, there are hundreds of children who have been killed already. There are hundreds of thousands of people, according to the United Nations, who are homeless because of the bombing, uh, close to 400,000 people. Uh, so it's it's simply a matter of getting from A to B. It's, it's not possible for a lot of people to make that journey. And people are very, very frightened. There are no bomb shelters. There are no sirens there. There's nowhere to hide from the bombs. And they simply don't know what to do at this point. Kelly, this morning we also heard from Hamas. Hamas alleging that some of the hostages who were taken from Israel back into Gaza, that they've been killed by the Israeli bombing of Gaza. What is Hamas saying about that and what are Israeli officials saying about it? Yeah, Hamas claims that 13 hostages were killed in the airstrikes. Uh, I'm not sure if there's an exact timing uh, connected to that, but they have made similar claims in the past. Uh, the Israeli officials, from what we've seen, have not yet uh, responded to that. Please correct me if you've seen something that I haven't. Uh, but in the past, just a couple of days ago, when similar claims arose, the Israeli government warned against taking Hamas at its word. So I suspect we would hear something similar now. And quite frankly, we haven't seen any uh, evidence. We can't verify the claims. So we just don't know whether uh, ho any hostages have been killed in the airstrikes. Joe, Savannah. And Kelly, we know that Secretary Blinken met with the Palestinian president in Jordan earlier today. This is after visiting Israel yesterday. What came out of those talks? Yeah, so we're still waiting for a readout from the U.S. side, but Secretary of State Antony Blinken did meet with Mahmoud Abbas, the Palestinian Authority president. He is deeply unpopular among Palestinians, so he's walking a very fine line uh, after these uh, uh, terrorist attacks by Hamas on Saturday. Uh, in fact, he has not directly condemned the attacks. He has condemned attacks on civilians in general on both sides. So it'll be interesting to hear uh, what that conversation 
conversation was like, what the readout is, and whether Abbas is able to come out and uh, strongly say that he condemns uh, what happened to so many Israelis in the South on mm -hmm. Saturday. Guys. All right. Kelly Kobaya, thank you for starting us out this hour. Thanks for watching. Stay updated about breaking news and top stories on the NBC News app or follow us on social media.